Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, all my listeners on the Brother Leon Show. I want to take the time to share with you some content that I did. Oh my God, this was like years ago when I first got into radio ministry. Um, during that time, I wasn't affiliated with any ministry. I wasn't even affiliated with any denomination. So I want to share with you guys um, a little bit of my history. And during that time, I was actually in a place where, you know, I could sort of kind of, you know, didn't have to worry about fallout or or offending anybody because I wasn't affiliated with anyone. So I want to bring to you guys a series that I did. This was my first radio series that I did on the radio. I did it on, um, you know, AM radio and also did it on blog talk during the MySpace years. So yeah, I'm kind of telling my age right about now. But um, this uh, series is called Before and After the Climax. And the first message in that is called He Hates Me. Why? Amnon and Tamar. So be blessed. series and it's going to be a little controversial so I want you to take notice and I want you to also take heed this message may be a message that you may not want to play around your kids because we're going to deal with sex we're going to deal with relationships and the title of this message or this series is called before and after the climax and the first message is entitled he hates me Amnon and Tamar and the reason that God has given me this message is because In church, you know, we always talk about sex, but we don't talk about it fully. And I believe that we need to begin to come to the realization that there are real challenges in the areas of relationships, that there are real challenges in the area of sex when it comes to being single, even when it comes to being married. Some people believe that you have a good marriage if you have good sex. But that's not the case because you cannot have a cake and just do it with just eggs. There are ingredients that you are that are needed to bake a cake. There are ingredients that are needed for a good relationship. Sex is not the only thing, but it is important. And so I want you to realize that in this series, we're going to deal with destroying the myths and the images of negativity that have blinded us. And I'm going to begin to deal with the men and I'm going to begin to deal with the women. But in the conclusion of this series... I'm going to bring you to a place where you can see yourself as being the miracle, being the miracle in the home, being the miracle to your wife, being the miracle to your husband, being the miracle to your kids, and that you can have a full turnaround when you begin to see yourself, man, as being the glory and the image of God in the home. Like I said in the Gift and the Glory series, that you need to begin to see yourself as the glory of God in your home and in the earth. And you, woman, you have to begin to see yourself As the gift of God, the gift of God in the man's life, the gift of God in the home, the gift of God in the community. Because God, he has orchestrated that we as men and women that we work together. And so if you can begin to see yourself as being the gift woman, if you can begin to see yourself as being the glory man, you can work as a key and lock and you can begin to open up greater things. So now I want to take this time and I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now that you will begin to open up our eyes with this message. Open up our eyes when it comes to the reality and truth about sex and relationship and love and how we deal with one another. Open up our eyes so that we can see clearly that we can escape the corruption that is in this world through lust. Amen. Have you ever noticed in your life at times when potential suitors come into your life he's drawn by your beauty your poise and those things that make you a woman your personality your physical features and your grace i'm gonna tell you right now that a man he will be willing to climb over a mountain run on water through a barbed wire fence just to get a moment of time with you just to get your attention for a date we've even gone through the ringers as men To make our first date a lasting impression in the hope of a second one. You know, we get our best suits, our outfits, our cars, 
SUVs, cologne or perfume, whatever. My, my preference is rock over. I love that cologne. We get our best mix CD. And then we go to the top scale restaurant within our budget for the purpose of getting the one we're attracted to to like us and desire that they will want to spend more time with us. Our goal as men is to sometimes to get you to a place where we can call you our own, if that is our motive for wanting to date with you. However, in this life, things have the tendency to get twisted when the devil gets involved and his messages get construed and people have a lack of knowledge concerning one another. We come to the place that we if people have generalized one another based on past experiences we've encountered. Some men tend to think that all women are the same and some women tend to think that all men are the same. The thought is, he only wants me for my body. That's what the women think, some of them. And some of the men, she only wants me for my money. And so I want to take you to a scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 and 7 from the NIV version. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with the sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. So I want you to begin to see that we are living in the last days, that we are living in the last times because People are acting this way more so than ever. You're not even safe in church. The devil comes to church and so do the pack of wolves. You can have a brother come into church. He can shout all day long. He can praise God. You as a sister can see that. But then you have to look deep under the surface. Yeah, he's praising God, but what's in his heart? You got to look under the surface. Yeah, he's up here giving glory to God. But what is in his soul? What is his motive? There are three M's in dating in a relationship. Motive. What is the reasoning behind the dating? You got to begin to see that. What is the motive for this guy wanting to ask me out? What is the reasoning behind the dating? The second is manner. What type of dating will come about in this encounter? Will we be friends with benefits? Will we be the type of friends where, yeah, we have a sexual relationship, but there is no commitment at all? Because I want you to know that in church, we have this. We have it on the world. We have it in church. And I want to tell you right now that all players go to church, that all gold diggers go to church, and all pimps go to church. So I want you to see that church is not a safe place. You're going to have to have the same spirit of discernment when you're in church. Because if not, you're going to be fooled. The Bible says in Galatians, oh foolish Galatians. Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? And I want to put it down like this. Oh, foolish Delawareans. Who have bewitched you or who have had a conversation with you that you should not obey the truth? And so you have to begin to see that what type of dating will come about in this encounter. That's the manner. What is the message that I'm trying to convey In this time of dating, am I giving off the impression that I'm desperate? Am I giving off the impression that I want to get married? Am I giving off the impression that all I want to do is just have hot, oily monkey sex? Is that it? Because if that is the message, your message that you're giving off will basically rule the relationship. It'll pretty much conduct how the relationship is going to go with the messages that we carry, whether they be vocally Or whether there be actions or even the way that we dress. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the way that you dress or the way that you carry yourself in front of men will determine if that man takes you serious or not. If you always up in his face giggling and snickling and smiling and everything, that man ain't going to take you serious. Because he's going to think to himself, yo, if she's like this with me, then who's to say she ain't like that with somebody else? You have to carry yourself in a way... That doesn't bring shame. If you up here running 
with a pack of girls, and you know that, you know, a couple of them girls, they ain't got no problem with sleeping with married men, or they ain't got no problem with, you know, somebody calling them a hoe, or they ain't got no problem with basically being like that. Sometimes you can be guilty by association, because brothers will see you with those type of girls, they will believe that you are like that, and you may not even be that way. But you have to realize and come to the realization that you got to watch what you say, watch how you dress, and watch who you are with. Because a lot of people have gotten a bad rep just by being around other people. And they didn't even do anything that the other person has done. So I want to tell you that manner, the type of dating that will come about in this relationship matters a lot. So I want to take you to the third one again. What is the message that I'm trying to convey in this time of dating? And some people date with the purpose of marriage and family. Some people date with the purpose of materials and money. Some people date with the purpose of sexual fulfillment and sexual fantasy. And some people date with the purpose of commitment and contentment. And the final one, some people date with the purpose of companionship and freedom from fear of being alone. Some people, they just don't want to be alone. They got to be with somebody. The motive behind your date will determine the matter in which you date. The message you convey on your date will determine the course of the relationship. When the motive is based on lust, the manner will be lustful and the message will be lustful. Lust can never be fulfilled and it never can be satisfied. I want to take you over to James. James chapter 4, verses 1 and 3 in the NIV. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you. You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend it on what you get out of your pleasures or lust. That happens so much with us. We ask and we receive not. But we ask only so we can uh, consume it upon our own flesh. Lord, I, I want a million dollars because I want to go to Vegas. Lord, I want this Barbie trophy wife because the only thing I want to do is just, you know, have her parade around with me so people can say, hey, he, got, he has a trophy wife. But that is not the purpose of wanting prosperity. That is not the purpose of wanting a wife. The purpose of having money or having prosperity is so that you can be a blessing in the earth. The purpose of having a mate is so that you can have the will and the way of God in your life because two are better than one. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And God has called you to have a helpmate so that you can fulfill all the will of God in the earth. That is the purpose of having a wife. That is the purpose of having a husband. The purpose of true prosperity is so that you can be a blessing unto others, so that you can be the good Samaritan. I want to take you over to Proverbs chapter 30, verses 15 and 16 out of the NIV. The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the land which is never satisfied with water and fire which says enough. Never says enough. Because I want you to see that when you begin to deal with lust, lust is like a fire. And that fire can never be satisfied. That fire can never be quenched because it came from Satan. Satan is the originator of lust. Lust came from him and that lust was a fire because he, he wanted God's throne. He wanted God's power. And so what he did is he deceived all the angels. But when God threw him out of heaven, God kicked him out of heaven, he ended up falling. And when he fell, the Lord proclaimed upon him that a fire... He will have a fire on the inside and that fire will consume him and that fire will always be burning. And that is the same fire that was in him and that is the same fire that is in lust. Because one thing about lust is that you have to realize that lust is a spirit and that spirit can never be satisfied. That spirit will never be full because it comes from Satan and it comes from hell. Hell will never be full. It will always keep having souls. It will always keep getting bigger. And so that's the one thing that I want you to see is that the appetite with lust always keeps on getting bigger. If your thing is porn, you're always going to want more porn and even crazier porn. If your thing is, is women or, or having sexual relationships with women, you won't be satisfied with just one. 
pretty soon you'll want two. You'll want three. You'll end up wanting to go out here and have a menage. you end up, you know, being a swinger, going to these sex parties and clubs. But I want you to see that everything that you see that is on TV or everything that you see that is in those videos, don't take that into your real life. Because I'm going to tell you, they call that art. But when that art comes over into your real life, it ends up being tragedy. And that's the one thing that they don't tell you. Those people in those movies, they get tested. And the only time you see them having sex is basically with one another on the set. After the set, no haps. Not unless it's with another star who they know or who they're in a relationship with. But you can't be that way. All women are not that way and all men are not that way. And that's the one thing that you have to see. These music videos, I never thought that we would come to a day that we will begin to glorify being a pimp or being a hoe or that a video vixen could write a tell-all book and it get on the uh, New York Times bestsellers list. Or even going back in the Clinton era that a woman can have an affair with Bill Clinton, our former president, and get a TV commercial. I never thought that I would see that day, but that day has come. But I want you to know that these are the last days. And I want to take you over to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 8. All things are worrisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough seeing, nor the ear, it's feel of hearing. And I just want you to see that that's how it is. If you are so consumed by lust, you will never be satisfied because, hey, your eyes will never get full of seeing something that's lustful. Neither will your ears get tired of hearing it. And your appetite for it will never be satisfied. I want to take you to another scripture, Second Peter Chapter 1, verses 4 and 8. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control Perseverance and to perseverance, godliness and to godliness, brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lust in man can never by any means be satisfied, for its origin comes from the fiery pit of hell. Like I said before, hell keeps getting bigger and so does man's lust, for it is a fire that will never be full and it reigns in the soulless regions of man. And so I want you to begin to see that if you are battling with lust today that God, he can deliver you from it. If you are battling with images in your head or if you're battling with porn or if you're battling with a sexual addiction God, he can deliver you. I want to take you to another scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 at 19. Having lost all sensitivity they have given themselves over to the sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. That's how lust is. It just keeps on wanting more. It keeps on wanting more. I want to take you to another scripture. We're going to be going all over the scriptures with this message. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful men, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father but from the world. First John. Chapter 2 and 16. That's what I read. 2 Samuel. And I want to take you over to Amnon and Tamar. In the course of time, Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. And what I'm reading here is uh, 2 Samuel 13, 1, and we're going from verse 1 to 19 in the NIV. Amnon became frustrated to the point of illness on account of his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. Now Amnon had a friend named Jonadab, son of Shema, David's brother. Jonadab was a very shrewd man. He asked Amnon, why do you, the king's son, look so haggard in the morning? After morning, won't you tell me? Amnon said to him, I'm in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Go to bed, he said. Go to bed and pretend to be ill, Jonab said. When your father comes to see you, say to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and give me 
something to eat. Let her prepare the food in my sight so I may watch her and then eat it from her head. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and make me some special bread in my sight so I may eat from her hand. David sent word to Tamar at the palace, Go to the house of your brother Amnon and prepare some food for him. So Tamar went to the house of her brother Amnon, who was lying down. She took some dough, kneaded it, made the bread in his sight and baked it. Then she took the pan and served him the bread, but he refused to eat. Send everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food here in my bedroom so that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the bread that she had prepared and brought it to her brother Amnon in his bedroom. But when she took it to him to eat, he grabbed her and said, Come to bed with me, my sister. Don't, my brother, she said to him, don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. What about me? Where could I, where could I get rid of my disgrace? And what about you? You would be like one of the wicked sons in Israel. Please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. But he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he raped her. Then Amnon hated her with an intense hatred in the fact that he hated her more than he loved her. And Amnon said to her, get up and get out. No, she said to him, sending me away will be greater wrong than what you have already done to me. But he refused to listen to her. And he called his personal servant and said, Get this woman out of here and, and bolt the door after her. So his servant put her out and bolted the door after her. And she was wearing a richly ornamented robe. For this was the kind of garment the virgin daughters of the king wore. Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the ornamented robe she was wearing. She put her hand on her head and went away weeping aloud as she went. That is a tragedy in itself, but it's... A reality in dating is a reality even in the church world. That there are guys who are like this. There are guys who will proclaim their love. But soon as you come up pregnant or soon as you need them to come through, they're not there. Or better yet, they don't even want to be bothered because now they got what they wanted. He victimized her. The motive was that he just wanted to go to bed with her. He didn't love her. He lusted after her. And the thing about lust is that once it gets what it's lusting after, it's never satisfied. He was never he was never satisfied with her. And that's the shame in this whole story. Is that the one thing is that he victimized that girl and then had a nerve to throw her out. And that's what ends up happening when you end up hooking up with a dude and he, you know, is everything that you want, but in the end he ends up victimizing you. You know, there are stories after stories. He was coming here from New York. He was coming here out of Philly. As soon as I found out I was pregnant, he don't even want me no more. He ends up hating me now. He trying to say that he's not the father of the baby. And these are things that are all too real. But you, my sisters, you have to begin to wake up and know that there are knuckleheads out here. And I want to tell you guys that if you're up here doing this, or if you're up here being this way, God is going to require from you. Because the one thing that I want to tell you is that you cannot continue to play with women's minds and, and God not require from you. God didn't ordain that you take and have woman after woman, that you up here live a life that is so sexual that you got these kids out here and you can't even take care of them. You can't even take care of them. Here it is, you got six, seven kids. And when do you have the time to visit them? When do you have the time to send a check to go take care of their needs? Or if you do send a check, it's only, what, $50? $50 a month is not going to cover the needs of a kid. And so you up here trying to compare your kids with the kids overseas, they're getting 25 cents a day. So you figuring, well, yeah, my kid can live off of that. No, kids cannot live off of that. Kids cannot live off of that. But God is going to require from you. And you are the type of dude that ends up messing up these girls. And this is the reason why we have angry black women out here because they've hooked up with dudes like you who victimized them and then had the nerve to not want to be bothered with them afterwards. After the baby comes, you don't even want to come around anymore because you're up here saying, well, yo, I got a problem with the girl or I got a problem with this. 
But the thing is, is that, yo, you got a baby on the scene. You have to begin to provide for your own. God didn't create you to be a player. God didn't create you to be a pimp. But women, you got to begin to wake up and know that, hey, sex is not the only thing in the relationship. Just because this brother is hung like a horse don't mean that he's in love with you. Just because he got a strong back or just because he's knocking your back out every night, night after night, doesn't mean that he loves you. And this is the type of dude that you'll take and have him come live with you. This dude ain't got no job. He dropping you off for of work every morning. Call himself trying to be a rapper. But he ain't writing no lyrics. He ain't going to no studio. He ain't practicing, doing nothing. See, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But you got to hook up with a dude who has plans. You got to hook up with a man who's willing to take care of you. Who's willing to help you not take away. Because sometimes, sisters... You tend to base things on how looks are. You get the what, but you don't get the who. You don't get it. You just you, you just don't get it. You get the strong back. You get the bow legs. You get the bald head and the tats and the piercings and all that. But you don't get the quality that you are desiring. You don't get the quality, the trustworthiness that you desire. Because, yo, if this dude is busting you out, he's busting out some other, other girl. You don't get the stability. Here it is, he changes jobs like sneakers. You don't get the stability. And so I want you to see that you cannot base, you cannot base your life just on sex alone or just on the fact of looks alone. Guys, you cannot base your whole relationship on looks alone. This girl can look like a barber, but she ain't gonna clean up nothing when it comes to the house. She ain't gonna cook nothing. Only thing she good for is making reservations. And you cannot have that. Because after a while, you're going to get tired of Domino's. After a while, you're going to get tired of hot dogs and oodles and noodles. And after a while, ladies, you're going to get tired of him sucking up everything about your life. He'll take your money, have all his friends come over to your house. He play video games all day, smoke weed all day. You come home from work and, and the house is a wreck and you ain't got nothing in your refrigerator. He can't even pick your kids up from daycare on time. And he can't even pick you up on time. But yet you swear up and down... That this dude loves you. You swear up and down that he is the one that God has placed in your life. And the only thing he's good for is just blowing your back out. That's it. That's it. And so I want you, you have to wake up and know that there is a message. That there is a manner and there is a motive. If this dude has a motive or all he wants to do is just get in your pants, yo, pass him by. Because I'm going to tell you, when the time comes to pay bills... He's not going to be around. When the time comes to raise kids, he's not going to be around. But these are the things that happen in church. These are the things that are happening with our young girls. Hooking up with guys like this, who all they want to do is victimize. But I want to say a special prayer for you that you can come around. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you will bring a turnaround in our women. That you will bring a turnaround so that they will not have to go through the victimization in Jesus name and I want to tell you right now to be wise to be wise when you go out to be wise when you are fellowshipping or even going to a party don't let a man get you a drink don't even let your girls get you a drink there are some people who ended up getting a drink from a man they don't even know or getting a drink from girls who they thought that were their friends but they were jealous and they ended up places where they thought they would never end up. They ended up having videos made of them with guys running the train on them because they got drugged. And I don't want that to be the case with you, but you be wise. You be wise. If you want to go get something to drink, you go get it yourself. Or you have a waiter bring it to you. But don't just let somebody come and just bring you and hand you an open cup. Because there have been a lot of women, a lot of girls who have woken up. In strange places where they've never been. Waking up, they have to make the phone call. Daddy, I need you to come get me because I don't know where I'm at. Or girl, I need you to come get me because I don't know where I'm at. I don't know how I got here. And that shouldn't be the case. But I want to tell you, be wise. The Bible says, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. And so you have to be wise in the people who you come in your inner circle. You have to be wise in some of the girls who are around you as well. Because there are some girls who are jealous of your success. There are some girls who are jealous that God is using you. And so they'll take 
and know that, you know, you're looking for somebody, you want to date or, or potentially get married, and they'll take and, and set you up with the wrong dude, knowing he's the wrong type of dude. But they'll swear up and down, oh yeah, girl, he the one for you. Or fellas, you end up hooking up with a girl, and she can look everything like you want, and do everything like you want, but man, ain't nothing with her but game. And I want to tell you, man, guard yourself. Guard yourself, ladies. Guard yourself, brothers. Because there are people out here who want to deceive you and victimize you. There are so many men who've gotten themselves caught up with the sex that they didn't take the time to really see what the woman was about. And so now they end up having children by a woman who you shouldn't even have children with. Because now all it's about is just a check. Or better yet, you hook up with a girl and she has a disease. Here it is, bam, you lay with this girl, she done gave you herpes, and now you got herpes for the rest of your life. And the same thing with women. One night of pleasure can throw you into so much pain. Especially if you go out here and you're having...